My name is Olivia and I am a housewife. Since I finished raising my children, Liam and I have been living a relaxed life together. On this day, I'm home. Welcome back, Emily. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine as usual. I walked all the way here today, too. Ha ha ha. I'm glad to hear that Emily is fine. What is it, father? You doesn't seem to be in a good mood. No, no, it's not like that. I have more than enough energy. Well, I'll ask him to weed the garden for me. I'm getting old these days. My body hurts all over. What's that? Ha ha ha. I'm glad you two are looking good. This is my daughter Emily. She lives alone now, but she used to visit me from time to time. After a while, my son and his wife, Ryan and Autumn, also came over. Ah, uh, that spice again? Your mother cooking always tastes the same, doesn't it? Hey, what are you guys talking about? As always, if you're going to complain, don't eat it. Thank you both, Ryan and the others don't have to eat it if you don't want to. No, if we don't eat it, we won't have anything for lunch. And you know that mother-in-law is very mean to you too. Guys, that's enough. Ryan and Autumn often come to our house. Not only are they stingy with my cooking, but they also ask me for money every time. Emily knew this, so she came to check on us a lot lately. Then more bad news hit us. Both of you. I'm sorry it turned out like this. Oh no! Don't apologize, Liam. That's right, Dad. You didn't do anything wrong. Ha ah, ha, thank you. But you know, I thought I'd live longer. I'm so pathetic. Your illness is inevitable. You're not pathetic. That's right. I'm so shocked to be told that you don't have much time left to live, and I don't want to admit it, but... But... We can change how we spend our lives from now on. So, let's spend our days laughing more from now on. Thank you, Emily. Emily, you have become stronger. Liam's illness has been discovered, and the doctor has given him a life expectancy. As expected, Ryan and Autumn were also concerned about Liam's health. They came to visit him on that rare day. They left the hospital room immediately after the trivial conversation, and I ran after them to thank them. Absolutely, staying in a private room in the hospital is a waste of money. How much do you think it costs to pay for a bed? That's exactly what I'm saying, it's stupid to waste all that money if you don't have long to live. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. What? That's... That can't be true. Oh, hey Ryan, let's get your parents' house when your dad's gone. Oh, but I don't want to live with my mother-in-law, I hope she'll come after him soon. You know, I'm the oldest son, and I think I can take over the house, but my mom. What is this? I can't forgive you two for being so selfish. After overhearing the conversation between Ryan and Autumn, I managed to suppress my anger and returned to the hospital room. I told Liam and Emily about it, and they came up with a plan. A few months later, Liam finally died and went to heaven. On the day of the funeral, I was the mourner, but Ryan and Autumn were the ones in charge. Ryan and Autumn left the funeral home without doing anything. They did not return to the funeral, and when Emily and I returned home after the funeral. Hey! Why is the light on? Did you leave it on, Mom? No, I think I turned it off. Let's just go inside. Oh, welcome back you two. You're so late. Hey, thanks for staying up so late. What did you two do outside the funeral? Yeah, you can see that, right? We were getting ready to move, we didn't have time for the funeral. Look, we're pretty much done, it was a lot of work for both of us, you know? What? Moving? 
I mean, all that stuff at the entrance is mom's? Really? That's, what does that mean? We're going to live in this house from today, so you mother-in-law can go to a nursing home. What? What are you saying? You're the worst. Are you serious? Yeah, of course I'm serious, I mean it. Besides, dad promised me the house would be in my name. Whenever I move in here, it's up to us. Yes, it is. So, you old people who are standing in my way, please get out of my house. Ryan and Autumn looked at me and grinned when they said that. I was very angry with them, but I quickly changed my mind. Ha! Huh. Okay, please be my guest. What? Are you sure? Mother-in-law is leaving? Seriously you really want to go to the facility? I'm serious, but I'm still healthy and I'm not going to a facility. I'll find a place to live once I get settled. Then, Mom, come stay with me until we find a place. It might be a little cramped for the two of us, but if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. Thank you, Emily. Let's go then. Yes, Mom would be very welcome. I mean, seriously. Both of you? It's the same as you moving in without consulting me. You're a monster, kicking your own mother out for your own convenience. Oh, yeah, we're a monster. I'm a monster, I don't care about other people. Emily, let's leave these two alone. We don't know what's going to happen to us anymore, okay? Saying that, I took my untidily placed luggage and left the house with Emily. Despite the fact that we suddenly had to live together, Emily accepted me without a single look of disgust on her face. I was grateful for that, and quietly touched by the fact that she really had grown up to be a nice girl. A month later, while I was out with Emily, Ryan, and Autumn showed up. Oh, I finally found you. The other day I got an urgent call from my lawyer at home. And they told me that the house is in my mother's name, what do you mean? I thought we agreed that the house was in Ryan's name. Why the hell is it in your name? Ha ha ha. That's right, you're crazy. What the hell? What are you laughing at? Hey, you know what, hurry up and explain what's going on. You see, Liam has made a conditional will. The contents of that will were communicated to you before he died, right? He said that he would put the name of the house in Ryan's name on the condition that I continue to live in the house as long as I am healthy. Yes, I was with you at the time, I remember it clearly, I'm sure you both heard it. Yes, no. You're right, I did hear it. But that doesn't mean you want me to give you back something that was once given to me. Yes, that's impossible. A conditional will means that if you don't fulfill the conditions, you lose your right to inherit. So, the two of you lost your right to inherit the house the moment you kicked your mother out. I'm sure you heard me correctly, but how could I forget the important part? Hey, what's this? I can't believe this. Is there such a thing as a will? Why did you make it conditional? Damn it! Ryan and Autumn swore when they found out that it was a conditional will. They weren't happy that it was conditional, so... You don't seem to understand why it became conditional, so I'll tell you. Earlier, outside Liam's hospital room, you talked about it's a waste to pay the bed and you will getting the house. Your father was very angry about that, he said, what are you talking about? But my brother was very nice to me before he met Autumn. I had a glimmer of hope that my mother would be able to live peacefully at home in his name. After Liam died, I took him up on the offer, hoping he would change his mind. So, the conditional will was the last chance for both of us. What? What the hell is that? You're testing me like this. Yes, I am. 
And I'm also pissed off that you're making it sound like I'm the source of all this. But, well, I didn't expect you to despise me so much. I just made up my mind, too. Ha, ha. What do you mean, made up your mind? I made up my mind to get you out of the house and get rid of you. No, I don't accept that. That house is our house now. I know Ryan and he knows a lawyer. I won't let you have it. That's right. You can't be that selfish now. What do you mean selfish, huh? You should ask that lawyer. I'm sure the lawyer will tell you that you don't own the property. Ha, huh, well, you don't have to tell me that. You guys can act like big shots while you still can. Suck it up. With that, Ryan calls his lawyer friend. Then he gets paler and paler, and when he hangs up. You're lying, Autumn. You said we broke the terms and we have no property rights at all. No. You're lying. You're saying that we're wrong? Yeah. They said if we don't move out soon, they can sue us for trespassing. Trespassing? Because we got this house once. No, no, that's why you didn't inherit it, and I already told you that and you didn't listen. Oh, no. I can't lose that house. Yes, yes please. Just get rid of the inheritance. What? What are you talking about? Don't be so selfish. There's no way I'm giving up my inheritance, I refuse. Hey, wait a minute. Don't you think it's unfair to begin with? Mom has the insurance money, Emily has 8 million in savings. I thought you said I was going to inherit the house. Yeah, it doesn't fair if we don't get the house. You both have a lot of money, you should have no problem giving us the house. You guys are being too selfish. There is no way we would accept such an offer. In the first place, Liam made the will conditional because you are so selfish. There's no way I would do something like that against Liam's will. Really, I don't know what you're thinking. Ryan and Autumn suddenly encourage him to give up his inheritance with selfish logic. Of course, they cannot accept such a request, so when they refuse, Actually, we have a lot of debt. So, we really need the house please, give us the house. Debt? Why did you get into debt? It's not like you were in that kind of financial trouble. I checked the market price of the house and found that it was selling for more than I expected. So I played so hard to get the house. I thought I could pay it back by selling the house, so I borrowed a good amount of money. So we really needed the house. What's with your reason? I'm not selling the house and I can't give it to you. Then give me the money from the bank. Emily, you would have inherited the house and I would have gotten twice the amount. Don't be silly. You're the one who said you didn't want that little money. Why are you talking so small? Don't hold it against me. You're abandoning your family. You're the one who cut me off in the first place, don't be so selfish. I won't give a dime to you. Oh no. Hey, what are you going to do about it, Autumn? You put us in a lot of debt. What? Don't blame me. You were in it with me. I wouldn't have even thought about it if you hadn't brought it up. You're the one who brought it up, so it's your fault. Yeah, yeah, you can fight all you want. Better yet, go home and get ready to move out. Oh no no, wait, can you just think about it a little bit more? Yes, I'm sorry for everything I've done, please let us have the house. What I couldn't forgive you more than anything was the bad things you said about Liam. You've used up your last chance and I have no sympathy for you. Because why would you go into debt to spend so much money? I'm cutting you off too, next time I see you, I'll see you in the next life, bye bye. Oh no. No way! I have to live with that much debt? So Ryan and Autumn left the house with heavy footsteps.
After that, at the urging of their lawyer, they quickly packed their things and left the house. Although they had left home, they had nowhere to go, so they rushed to a hotel. They managed to save money with a budget plan and worked hard at their jobs and part-time jobs, but the amount of debt was too much, and they could only pay the interest. They cannot live like that, so they work even harder, but their recklessness does not last long, and they both fell ill. They asked us to postpone the repayment of the debt because of their poor health, but they were living on the edge and could not go to the hospital, so their health problems persisted. As a result, their debt continued to grow with interest and eventually reached a level where they could not pay their debts no matter how hard they worked. They tried to file for bankruptcy, but the judge ruled that they were responsible for their own debts, so they could not file for bankruptcy. The two of them had to live with debts that they could not repay even if it took them the rest of their lives. And as for Emily and me, it's been a long time since I had a meal like this with you, mother. Well, we used to eat at home all the time, so it's fresh. I'm sorry, I asked you to join me in my cooking research. No, it's okay, your cooking is very original and interesting. I wonder, I just combine what I think is good. But I don't think people usually try to put curry roux in a stew. Ha ha ha, but you ate it surprisingly well, didn't you? Well, it was meant to hinder your career, but don't offer it to your future husband, okay? Uh, I liked the taste surprisingly. Yeah, so? It was kind of like curry, but it also felt like a stew. Oh, hey, how about this? Croquette noodles. That, well, they even have that in the restaurant, and it was delicious, right? Yeah, it was delicious, but a bit was boring, wasn't it? No, that's okay, I'm not looking for fun. As a self-proclaimed culinary scientist, I'd like to try something a little more daring. I think this is more of an experiment than research. Speaking of experiments, that fried egg worked well, didn't it? The one where you put breadcrumbs on a raw egg and fried it, I was so nervous it was going to explode. The thrill of it must have been so much fun. It turned out delicious and was a great success. Don't experiment too much, I don't want to eat sticky fried rice anymore. The timing of adding fermented soybean in this dish is very critical, I still can't get it right. Also, the room smells really bad, so you really have to moderate it. By the way, Mom, you never fail to cook, why? Because I basically follow the recipe exactly and arrange it safely. Oh, you arrange it too? It's so delicious, I wonder if it's that kind of food. Um, thanks, I'll teach you next time if you want. Thanks, but, hmm, maybe I'll ask you to teach me when I'm done with the experiment. So you're still going to continue? After that, I went back to my old house, and sometimes Emily would come and visit me, and we would cook together. Even though the house is too big for me alone, it comes alive immediately when Emily comes over, which is very helpful. I am sure that Emily is also concerned about this and comes to visit me often, but I have a little problem that I cook a little too cheesy every time she comes over. One day she said, Mom, it's time to flambe, she even made a bit of a fuss, so things are a bit too lively now. I wonder who Emily looks like. Today we came out to eat because we always eat at home, but it seems to be a day to look for Emily's idea. So we, parents and children, will continue to spend lively and enjoyable days together.